What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the podcast, The Coach's Show with Coach Sanders. Thanks for being back on. Absolutely. Today, we are sponsored by CNB Bank. CNB Bank is a proud supporter of the Carlsbad Cavemen. Stop in today for all your banking needs. A deposit here is an investment for Carlsbad, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Coach, let's just dive right into it. Close call against Alamogordo. What were your thoughts on the performance? Um, mixed, honestly. I mm. think we did some good things, and I think we did some stuff that I wasn't really happy about. Um, I'm glad we got out there with a W. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was our biggest, that was our main goal. Um, at the end of the day, that W doesn't look any different if it's a ugly win or, a, or sure. a good win that w is a w so we'll take it but um yeah i think that we we kind of to me it seemed like we just kind of came out flat again um you know the first quarter we were zero zero ball game um our defense played well offensively i think we were a little flat um you know and then you know we went into half with i think a 6-0 lead i think because we missed the extra point right and then um second the second second half the third quarter kind of a explosion it kind of I think it, we scored twice and they scored twice or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, it just seemed like um, we just never really seemed to really hit on all cylinders. Um, you know, our, our defense gave up some plays. Our offense, you know, we would drive the ball, but we weren't we weren't you know capitalizing on the on what we did. So, like I said, at the end of the day, I'm glad we got out there with the win, but um, it was it wasn't our best performance by sure. any means. So. We're definitely um, really glad to have a bye week and, and get some of those cobwebs knocked off and get some rest. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to ask you about was the bye week. Like, obviously, it's a big, you know, part of your season. Is this the perfect bye week situation? Like, was it placed in the right spot this year? When I, when I first saw it at the at the beginning, of the, well, it was actually, you know, in the spring of last year when the, when the schedules came out. Um, I loved it, and I still love yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's it's a really good spot for us. Um, you know, looking back and looking at our schedule, you have Clovis, Alamo, Oregon Mountain, three games that we we should have won. We 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 drop one of those, but and then you get your bye week before your you know probably your two toughest games, um, minus Centennial. You know, with, yeah. with 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 Cruces High and Hobbs. So it's a really good time to bye week. Mm -hmm. um, special teams had a little bit of you know a struggle. In the last week and the week before, field goals and extra points. What are you seeing there, and how are we like working towards that? I think it's just focus. Um, mm. I, th I, you know, you know, we had you know some bad snaps and some bad holds against Oregon Mountain, and then you know that that extra point cost us there at the end. Um, and then we just kind of just shanked one. Um, I just think it comes down to prep and 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 focus and and taking that play as just the last play on the planet that you know that's right. that's the only thing that matters in the, in that moment is that particular snap and that particular step and that kick and you know I get it that you know they're they're high school kids and they're mm -hmm. they're not going to be a thousand percent on every single play we just got to understand that you know that we at this point in the juncture we can't have any boo boos like right. we have to play flawless and the next two teams that we play we can't get away with any error, whether it be special teams, defense, offense, um, we have to execute almost, you know, 100% because mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to beat a Cruces High or a Hobbs. In Do their place, yeah. right, for Cruces yeah, at Yeah, for least. Cruces, yeah. yeah. I mean, either either play, you know, they're yeah. both really good football teams, so we're going to have to really sharpen that stuff up. This sure. Week. This last week I noticed a player that I called a lot more in the broadcast than I have in, in weeks past, Richard Hernandez. Yeah. Had a great, and it's RJ, right? Yeah, it's RJ. It goes by. Yeah. He had a phenomenal game. What was it about last game that made him more relevant than than past weeks? Uh, well, nothing, nothing. We didn't game plan it or nothing. You know, our, our passing concepts are, you know, they're all based off of, um, you know, reads and, and progressions. And mm -hmm. it just He's happened open. to work out. And, and you've seen it the last three weeks. And when I look at the stats at the end of the game between him and Evan and, and Eloy and Bobby, like the distribu distribution of the passes have been really, you know, kind of kind of divvied out equally to those guys. Um, mm. And so RJ just seemed to have that night. You know, he was just that guy that night. was in the right spot. I, it depends on what kind of defense and how they're playing us of what, you know, what guy's going to be open. But um, he's kind of an unsung hero. He, he's not – he doesn't get all the hoopla that, you know, the rest of those guys get. But he goes out there and he works, and he's probably one of our smartest wideouts. Like he mm. knows – He's just that guy. He's not real big, and he's not the fastest, but he's just always open. You know, he and he runs really good routes, and he and he's got really great hands. You know, he got that one ball 
on the the first play coming out of the half, which was a phenomenal catch, like a Randy Moss type, you know. It was awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. a good one. Um, but he, that's just what he does. He, he and he catches a lot of those balls, you know, in that you know that RPO, that really tight, you know, catch it get get hit type of stuff. And he's mm-hmm. done really good this year for us doing that. So it was fun to watch him. And then it's like every week that we call a game, there's somebody else that kind of steps up. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool. We saw Ian come back from the, yep. you know, injury, and he's been really good. Like, he's yep. been a huge asset to offset what Brock's doing, and mm-hmm. Brock's been phenomenal, too. Like, can you speak to getting hit and still gaining yardage after the fact? Both of them do it real well. They, they're both good yeah, at it. Yeah, they, um, you know, and that's almost something, you, it's almost you can't teach it. It's just a kind of, a, it's a mindset type of deal. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go down after that first hit. And both of them really have it. I think Ian's got a little bit more speed and some shiftiness, but um, you know, definitely Brock's going to hit you, and Ian will do it too. So um, I'm really, I'm really glad that both of them are, are rocking and rolling. You know, they um, you know, they play off each other, but for for me, it, I get two backs that I can keep them fresh. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, Brock's been going all year. You know, Ian's kind of got fresher legs right now, but you know, in a game, you know, the, you can split the split the touches with them and and, and keep them. You know, unlike we did like last year, you know, Yuli got everything. Right, yeah, he, he <laughs> so, was working. Yeah, he was a workhorse. So it, it's good for us. I think in the long run, it's going to be really good for us. Kaysen Perez broke the school record. Pretty awesome. Um, he's been efficient. He's been really fun to watch. Yeah. 25, I think, t- passing touchdowns yeah, 20, on the season. He's sitting at 25 right now. 25, sitting right now. And he broke the record, which was at 23. Yep. Um, he's got time to make more you know break it and shatter it even yeah. um what have you seen in in recent weeks from Kaysen? Uh just same old Kaysen. like it's just goes to I, work. I love the fact that yeah he just shows up and he does what we're supposed to do and he's smart and he's efficient with the ball and he you know some people are like oh why'd you throw that out of bounds and I'm like that's the best throw he had all night you know um or he's you know like little screen games and they'll 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 catch on to the screen or whatever, and he'll take it and run where others would, you know, would have thrown the ball and would have got a, you know, legal man downfield penalty. Mm-hmm. Just a smart kid. Um, I'm I'm a super excited for him with all the records he breaks. I and mean, we're not yeah. chasing records. Records records are cool, but you know, at the end of the day, if you're sitting at home, you know, the records aren't that cool. But, right in the postseason. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad that he's he's getting the love that he's getting. Um, you know, like I said before, a lot of people doubted if Casey was the dude and. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's any question. No, I don't think it is. Not even close. Um, All right. So tell me about the bye week, right? You get an extra bye week. Like, how do you capitalize on that additional rest without it hurting you? Because there's a way that you can just, let's get lazy and then you get smacked, right? How do you kind of balance the rest and the practice? Um, So, so we, we basically are, we give them off, you know, the, the, the weekend when normally we bring them up on Sundays and mm. feed them and, and we watch film and do all that good stuff. And then, so we gave them off that. And of course, Monday was a holiday and we just completely gave them off. Just, just get away. I think it's good for them just to just reset. Don't think about football. Don't, don't, don't do anything. Just rest. So, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to go back in the normal, go back in the mornings. You know, it's going to be a really abbreviated, we're going to cut it back about an hour or so. So, mm. um, and then, you know, one of those days we're going to go hard. Full pads, rock and roll, same, you know, same as normal, just to keep them in the groove a little bit. And then uh, come back on Sunday and just jump into a normal week. So not sure. a whole lot, just kind of really, really pull back on them that first week. Okay, very cool. Um, all right, so can you tell me about the Las Cruces Bulldogs? They're solid. Um, they're supposed to be good, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if, if they're um, – Better than Centennial, if they're not, they're they're both really good football teams. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be a really good game when they actually end up. You know, night we play Hobbs, they they always play. So that's going to be a mm-hmm. really good game. If we weren't playing, I'd really like to go watch that game because it's going to be a it's going to be a knockdown drag out. But they're solid, man. They're 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 what we were. La- okay, so last year they were, you know, all juniors. You know, the year before that they were all sophomores, and we got them. That one was super was here, mm-hmm. and they kind of went through that same struggles that we're going through. Um, you know, and then they started out last year zero and four, I believe, and then they made that run, and they just haven't really stopped since then. Mm. And so they're all seniors. You know, that quarterback is a stud. He's got a cannon. Um, running back's a stud. You know, they're just they're just solid all around. The, I went and watched them against Hobbs, and they're they're just good everywhere. There's not a lot of weaknesses. 
Sure. Okay. Um, is this team fearless against opponents? Like we're about to have to face Crucis and then like you said, Hobbs, they're big moments, they're big, you know, opponents. Yeah. Do you feel like you can be confident that your team's not gonna see the moment as too big? I, I think I think uh going to Centennial and, and and doing what we did against them, um of course granted that you know wasn't what we completely wanted, but um the kids didn't show any of that in Centennial. And I think right. Centennial was a little more hyped up at that time and probably still are a little more hyped up, but no, I don't think so. I think our kids are going to go into it like another game. Um, you know, we, we try to – I always tell the kids, don't get too high, don't get too low. And mm-hmm. this could be one of those things where they could get too high, you know. Um, just play within yourselves and do what you do and, and go out and and play your game. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really matter. I'm not I'm not worried about our opponent, our, our opponent, you know, and no name, no face. If we, if we go out and figure out what we want to do and, and execute our stuff, <laughs> I'm not – you know, I'm not too scared about who's on the other side of the, of the fence, but um, that's a bigger battle than mm-hmm. it's easier said than done. Okay, so this last week we introduced a brand new black helmet. How did it come about? And like, did, did you get any feedback? The kids loved it. Um, you know, that's I'm not really into all that stuff, but the kids they. They love that stuff. I, mean, I like that black look. It's a good look. I, I it's know cool. There's there's some people that could be hit or miss on it or not, but um, it's actually not a full helmet. It's actually a skin. That yeah, because you guys over the top of it. So you just peel it off when you're done with it. it yeah, well, it sounds easy, but it's not. Um, mm. <laughs> so you actually have to dismantle the entire helmet. The face, oh, really? The face mask, all this, all those, the buttons, the screws, and all that. You take it off, and then the, the skin fits over it. Then you re attach everything so you got to take all that stuff off so it actually took the coaches we did it thursday night we had all the kids just line up their helmets and uh it took us about five hours really to get i it was all told done. the trainers did a lot of it they did the trainers okay. were there but i don't give them too much <laughs> okay fair no, but enough. yeah they they, yeah. they were a big part of it i'm glad they were there because it was it was kind of a nightmare it's a task it sounds yeah, like task, so so are we rocking black helmets next week too yes or? it's a pain in the butt to take it off too so we're so probably we gonna finishing? keep it on for a while we might Against we Hobbs, might, black might, black yeah. Hobbs helmets. Maybe, maybe. Oh, okay. I don't want to give too much away. We don't want to know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair enough. But yeah, those skins yeah. are cool. Yeah, and I've heard some different feedback. I liked them. I thought they were cool. Yeah. I like the fact that we're doing different things. Yeah, you know, it's pretty sweet. All right, artificial noisemakers. <laughs> Against Oregon Mountain, there was like a complete stop. Yeah, the referees stop. timeout. I mean, I got threatened with a personal foul for. You uh, got one. No, he he threatened me. He said oh. you're going to get one if you don't sh- don't hush up that. No- he he said, shut that horn down. And I'm like, guy, there's there's thirty of them up there. Right. What like, do I do? Yeah. So what did you do? Because I I, well, I know I just, it stopped. I just I, well I just radioed to the to the top and said, hey, go tell the announcer to tell him to shut it down. And then okay. as soon as the announcer was like, all right, guys, turn off the horns. It was like, burr, burr, you know. <laughs> but you know, ignited I, it a little more. And I actually, I actually checked into it with NMMA, um, and the answer I got was basically, as long as it's not simulating a whistle, it's okay. Um, oh. Yeah. So, so then it was fine. Yeah. I was going to say, there, I've never heard that There's before. an asterisk in there basically <laughs> saying that if the ref feels like it's obstructing the game, then he can, he can mm. step in. But mm. honestly, that's home field advantage. So That's what I, I mean, was thinking. If you thinking. got a horn, keep, keep rocking it, man. Keep rocking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll argue and I'll fight with you until... Till they shut the whole place down. But, sure. Um, to me, it's silly. Like, we, you know, we're we're playing for our fans, and and we want that crowd, and we want them to be in into the game, and then, you know, they're into it. I mean, mm-hmm. it, that was a huge moment in the game, and our our stands are doing exactly what we want them to do, and and I guess it's too loud. Sure. Okay. Is, Interesting. Yeah, I was gonna say because I thought, you know, that's kind of what you want your fans to do yeah. is get loud. I don't imagine anybody at like Alabama or. Tennessee or anything. Yeah. Like the rest like, hey, it's too loud in here. Yeah. Section yeah. 89. Y'all keep it, yeah. Y'all keep it down. No, it's, <laughs> it's silly. I mean, I get the spirit of the rule, but, I, you know, in that instance, I think our fans are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Is there a band rule? Um, yeah, there is. Um, I, and I was actually attached to the deal. Like, they can't play when they offense. And, and so it used to be you that. You can't play when we're on defense. Well, yeah. So, at home. so. Okay. There used to be a rule saying that the offensive coach could actually ask for them to stop it. 
Mm. Um, but now they've taken that completely out, and it's solely up to the umpire's discretion. Okay. So, so you're just mostly... We're at the camp. hands of them. Okay. But we're always at the hands of them. I was wondering yeah. about all of that stuff. It's it's something you never think about because at a football game you think loud. Yeah. You think lights and you Cannons think... Cannons and horns and... Yeah. And, you know, you got the lights that are flashing and... You know, we got some really cool stuff coming up with our new scoreboard yeah. and speakers and stuff like that. Like, you want that thing to be a circus. You want it to be a place that people don't want to come and play a football game. Mm -hmm. And to to have a ref step in and say, oh, don't do that. It, it kind of kills the yeah. mood a little bit. But um, Well, and it's for something somebody wants to go and do on a Friday and enjoy yeah. themselves in the stands. You know. I, I, get I get it. it. If there's yeah. a guy over there with a the, with the horn and he's shouting obscenities or, right. you know, like, yeah, shut that down. But, I mean, we're literally blowing an air horn. Like, I don't know. And it's I mean, <laughs> yeah. we, we have a bunch of them that we hand out, but I think some of, uh, several of our, our parents have them, have their own, too. Mm. So, I mean, they're pretty cool. I don't know if you've seen them. They're just, they're built off a, like a Milwaukee drill. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, and the compression... No. Makes okay. Them go so that's pretty cool. They're pretty nice. Yeah, you just you just charge the battery up and hit it like you're. Dang. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So the, I mean, this kind of goes without saying now, but the energy level at, at Ralph Boyer Stadium has is probably better than it's been in your past two years. What do you have to say about like how the fans have been? You know, I I, I think I asked you this maybe four <clears throat> or five weeks ago, and I think it's only gotten better. Yeah, I think so. Um, and and I'm I'm super proud of our fans. They they've done exactly what we've asked. You know they they've stuck with us through thick and thin, and they've been there. They've been loud. They stayed the whole time. Um, yeah. You know that's part of it. I mean that's part of the reason why we're playing. We're playing for our community and our and our to represent our fans and in our in our town, and that's part of it. And mm. so yeah, I'm proud of them, man. That that's uh, it's always nice to look up there and see some see some people, and then it's it's really nice to see them still there. You know, is that why you guys are pur purposely playing close games? Yes. To keep the yeah. fans in Just, just it. to okay. keep it going. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, can you give us like a sneak peek of what might be included in the field house? Like any, even just one item that people can be like, oh, that's going to be cool. Um, nothing real like specific. I mean, we were talking earlier about the, the film room. That's my favorite room in the whole yeah. place. Um, you know, and there, and that, like I said, I, I poke my head in there, and they got the 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 sound acoustic tiles that they got, and it's that's mm. all throughout the entire um, field house. Um, it could be like a little movie a, theater. Yeah, and then there's yeah. this monster screen, and it's you know, like I thought it was. It's just like these. It's not a pull down projector type screen. It's, it's a, all panel. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how we're gonna. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it looks awesome. Yeah, you know, it's gonna have the theater seating with the nice seats and stuff, and I think we can fit like eighty and ninety people in mm. it. Um, the weight room is gigantic. Um, really excited is that, that, and that's actually should be coming in here really soon, like this week or next. Um, so I know the floor and stuff's all, all in and so they are supposed to have that. So they, I know the company itself comes in and does a, like a, like a reveal video or whatever. Okay. So whenever I get, Sweet. whenever that gets done, we'll get that over to you. And that'll be cool. But yeah, that's, uh, those are the two big things. Um, training room's really cool. Equipment room. We got this big, nice, uh, um, laundry room with which is nice because all the laundry is getting done. That's an underrated room. Oh in, my in sports, yeah, it's and it's connected to the equipment room, so yeah. that's gonna be a that's gonna be a nice, nice, nice instead of you know hauling jerseys back and forth and like plenty of space, tons of space. Yeah, so yeah, very cool. It's, it'll be it'll be awesome once it gets done. I don't know when that's gonna be, but we'll have to get like a like drone, you know, fly around, fly or something. in there. That'd be cool. You gotta get someone that can. Actually, yeah. the drone. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So does this, and I, I, I've i never really asked you this, but does this team have any superstitions or anything? We talked about it with Lennon and Colt, and they said they got to play with Tim Tebow before games if they win games. Um, that's like one of the things they have to do on Madden, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but do you know of any, or have you had any in the past where it's like this, you know, stuffed animal stays in the locker room or the, you know, anything like that? No, not that nothing I can think on. of. Okay. Um, I mean, I imagine there's some players that got some individual superstitions, yeah. but as a team, um, no, I can't think anything. I mean, there's I, no shrines or anything. No, like. there's nothing. <laughs> yeah, and we got a routine, of course, but I wouldn't yeah. say that's a superstition. No, yeah, but, okay. Um, 
yeah, I, I can't say anything. I know, um, you know, speaking of the new field house, you know, I don't know if you've seen it or, but there's that big blue rock out there and I really want mm -hmm. to get that, that rock out and I want a big bronze. So we talked oh, about yeah, a big we, yeah. bronze club. I think that would be the cool little superstition type. That of, would be cool. Type of, I don't know, routine or superstition or not, but it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen for sure. Okay. So I wanted to ask a couple of fun uh, questions uh -oh. to you, just maybe past <clears throat> or present. Uh, one of the things is what is a snack you absolutely have to have in your office at all times? Cashews. Cashews. Just Cashews and jerky. Salted? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's actually my, that's what I eat. That's my diet. It's <laughs> that's your whole life. Yeah, it's, it's jerky and, <clears throat> and cashews and a case of Coke zeros. That's if you're going to, if you're going to rock beef jerky, you got to tell us what it is. Is it the dry, flat, wide? Is it the like moist, so, thicker? Yeah. It, Sam's has the big bag and I don't know what it is, <clears throat> but it's real thick. It's like, it's not even called jerky. It's like beef strips or something. Oh, okay. Like that. Uh -huh. So it's kind of thicker. Mm -hmm. um, those are really good. Those and if I go good. jerky, it's usually, um, I'm forgetting the name of it. It's a Walmart brand though, but it's, uh, it's like, it's the thinner one, but it's real soft and, and like, okay. Yeah. So that and any cashews are good. So. Okay. And then you said Coke Zero. Coke Zero. Do you yeah, ever that's put, my coffee. Have you ever put peanuts or cashews or anything in your Coke? No. That's, have you ever heard of that? You're talking about my dad now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just throwing so it back. It was, yeah, it was, it was peanuts and Dr. Pepper or peanuts and Big Red. Mm, that's, okay. That's, it sounds kind of good. I've just never tried it either. I think it's a, it's a honky West Texas thing. <laughs> okay. That, that uh, he did all the time. He sure. always had peanuts in his Dr. Pepper. So. Mm. Um, what is the funniest reason a player has needed to come off the field? Do you have any stories for it? Um, I've had a, I've had a, I've had a, had a player, um, had an accident mm. that he had to leave. Like a Paul Pierce type of accident? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's so no we, we've had that. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, tough. no, That's we, tough. we pretty much tell them. If it's, I mean, we better be able to go get you off the field. So I don't really have a lot of those issues, but mm. I've had that one and I'm like, okay, yeah, get out so of here. So preparation is huge yes. for stuff like that. And yeah. halftime is big. Halftime or, or, you know, you know, the little tents, mm -hmm. the little tents. Um, yeah. They, but do you guys uh, have that could one? come in handy. Yeah. You don't have one right now. We don't have one. Okay. Well, one would, would have been needed Friday night. Oh, I promise. <laughs> wow. Okay. So it's recent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, have you found, and this is the final question today. Have you found the word that describes this team? We talked about it, I think in week one, we said, what is one word that describes Carlsbad mm -hmm. Caveman this year? It's week coming on week nine. Do we have one? Oh, up to this point. Um, resilient mm. i think um you know they just kind of keep pushing and keep you know everything's still going in the right direction now do we have two games that didn't go our way absolutely mm -hmm. um but in real life you know that's gonna happen yeah. and you know you're not gonna win everything and i think those kids just show up to work they you know they 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 learn from their mistakes they put it past them I think they're doing a really good job of not letting that stuff, you know, define them as a team or, you know, because, you know, teams of the past, you know, that could have could have tanked the whole season. You know, a loving team, yeah. put, you know, being down like that at half and then, you know, stick their head in the dirt and they beat us by 40. Um, we rolled to the next five or six games and, you know, just – so I think, um, you know, resilient, um, gritty – you know, I think these last two games is really going to be able to define what this team is. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to the next two games. You know, they're really tough opponents, um, and they're ultimately it's going to decide if we're going to get in or not. Yeah, and that's you know right now we're on the bubble. Um, you know, it really depends on the next two games. Absolutely. We got to get one of them. Um, if we get one of them, I think we're guaranteed in. All right, Coach. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Absolutely. I look forward to it. I think you're going to get it. We're going to have to see. Absolutely. All right. All right. Show up for the Hobbs game yeah. here yeah, in a few show weeks. Out. All right. Thank you, Thanks, sir. Bud.